All right, let me get up here. And stoop kid never leaves a stoop. There we go. What's going on, YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video, and I'm just checking in on you. What's going on? How are ya? Now, today is March 27th, and this is going to be your Cassie Mendoza and Danny Weaver weekly vendor resets and must buys. So, I hope you enjoy. I am doing both vendors, so there will be timestamps after the live premiere. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. But before we figure out where Cassie and Danny Weaver are, you can see if we look on the map, there's no white shopping cart icons. So we need to unlock those by finding the snitch. Now please let Buddy everyone know business. in the comments where you, you the typically location. find the snitch, where you found the snitch today, whatever it is. Help each other out so you can find him today. Now pick That's up the bounty. Find, and if you go to that bounty, you can click go to details and click abort bounty. That way you can keep it for later. And then going back to the snitch, here is my exact location. So my coordinates are 1408 by 3626, and I am just south of the 1040 safe house. Now to get here really quick, all I did was fast travel to the Jefferson Trade Center mission, and then I ran across the street. Pretty easy. But again, let everyone know where you find the snitch. That way, no one has any issues. Because remember, these vendors close and open every other day. So if you miss it one day, you might have to wait a couple to see them again. All right. So going to the map, oh, there's one right here. So we have uh, our white shopping cart icons are now on the map. And first up, let's go to Cassie Mendoza. Now Cassie Mendoza is located in Foggy Bottom. So what we're gonna do is fast travel to the Truman safe house and run over there. Now, if you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up. I do daily division content, so make sure you ring that notification bell. That way you get notified every time I make a division video. Now running over here to Cassie. Yes, so this is gonna be the underground one where the GPS might try to trick you. So I'll explain that really quick. Let me just run over there. So you can see right now I'm running down the street and I'm following the GPS. A golden bullet. However, if you look, I highlighted the white shopping cart icon. That's where Cassie is. So if I were to keep following, eh, let me take care of this heavy real quick. There we go. Pretty easy. Right. So if I were to get over here, you can see where the GPS is saying take a left, go down the street. You can see this, and it says take a right. But that's not where Cassie is. Cassie is directly underneath me. So find the green door right here, and this is your entrance. Boom. Pretty easy. And again, after the live premiere, I'll do timestamps and everything, but this is Cassie Mendoza right here. Oh yeah. I've got stuff. Now, let's see what he, she has cooking. Checking out this fine merchandise? Alrighty. So starting off at the top, we have the named items, and this has another disclaimer. So if you are new or returning to the game, you will only see the top two items if you have not already unlocked the bottom two named items. Now, the Shield Splinter and the Hunter Killer chess piece have to be unlocked for Cassie to sell them. So, for the Shield Splinter, you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the Year 1 Hunters and open up the Ivory box that is in the base of Ops. You'll receive the weapon and then Cassie will sell it. And then for the Hunter Killer, you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the Year 2 Hunters that are attached to Warlords of New York and then open up the Off-White chest that is in the Haven settlement, and then you will receive this chess piece, and after that, Cassie will start to sell them every week. Now, starting off at the top, we have the Surge. This is the named rifle with perfect spike, and this week it comes with armor damage, which is pretty decent. However, I'm not a big rifle fan, so I'm not really gonna say this is a must buy, but if you do not have this one fully proficient, remember, pick these up, donate the duplicates, get it fully proficient without even using it. Next, we have the proxy. 
Now, this is the named Palisade Steelworks backpack with perfectly tamper-proof. Now, perfectly tamper-proof whenever you throw out your hive, turret, remote pulse, or even decoy, it can shock enemies, all right? Now, this isn't the best backpack in the game. However, it is, it is very fun. The cool part about this one is, remember, you can use this with your decoy. So you can actually combine this with the, um, what was that other one? Um, the combustor chest piece. There we go. So you could use the proxy with the combustor, and then you could throw out a decoy, shock people, and it explode at the same time. That'd be pretty dope. Moving on, we have the Shield Splinterer. This is the named F2000 with Perfect Optimist. Now this week it comes with really high assault rifle damage, decent health damage, and stability, but this is perfect. All you have to do is pick this one up and recalibrate that stability off for damage targets at a cover, uh, just like no, the one I am damage. using right now. So I actually have one, boom, just like that. And then you're good to go. And finally, we have the Hunter Killer chest piece. This is the named Golden Gear chest with Perfect Intimidate. And this week it comes with, well, I mean, near max armor for that core, health, and then skill damage. I'm not a big fan of either one of those, so I'm going to skip that chest piece this week. And moving on to the gear set items, Heartbreaker Backpack with Hazard, True Patriot chest piece with Weapon Handling, Rigor Gloves with uh, Status Effects, Negotiator's Dilemma Knee Pads with Crit Chance. Nice. Uh, tip of the Spear Holster with Crit Chance. And finally, Foundry Bulwark Mask with Armor Region. Ooh, that's actually a, a really good one. Now, moving on to the high end. Uh, I'll double back whenever we finish. Moving on to the high end items, we have a carb... Ooh. <clears throat> Yo, pick this one up right now. This is a really good weapon. This is nice. I like this one a lot. Um, I just did a Carbine 7 build a couple weeks ago, and people were like, why are you using the Carbine 7? Because it is a fun weapon. I mean, I understand that, you know, people are jumping on the Police M4 train, the G36, the Eagle Bearer, the uh, St. Elmo's Engine, the Shield Splinter. I understand uh, the King Breaker. I mean, there's a lot of really good weapons out there, the FAMAS, the CTAR. Um, but the Carbine 7 is also a good weapon. So try it out. This one has max damage to armor, so all I would do is just uh, change the talent to whatever talent you want, and then you can optimize those attributes, and you're good to go. You can make it whatever weapon you want. Say you want it with Sadist and a Bleed build, boom. Say you want it with Flatline and a Spotter build, boom. Say you want it with Optimist, boom. You can do whatever you want as long as uh, you just change that talent. Pretty cool. Moving on, we have a tactical SASG-12 with optimal range and killer. A Douglas and Harding backpack with max status, repair skills, and leadership. And finally, Walker and Harris knee pads with headshot and hazard. Hmm. Looking at the mods, we have crit hit damage 10.6 and seeker mine plus one cluster. Now, here we go. Must buys, things to look for from Cassie Mendoza on March 27th hmm right off the bat uh for the named items i would say the shield splinter is great just change that stability to whatever bottom attribute you want you're good the surge is good with that damage to armor just remember headshots will give you that skill damage so as long as you are hitting them in the head you're good going to the gear set items the heartbreaker backpack's good using heartbreaker and hazards pretty smart not bad especially when you can get all of that extra bonus armor and be hazard. I mean, that's pretty killer. Uh, the Negotiator's Dilemma with Crit Chance is really good. Using that with like an AR is money. So if you were to do that with an AR build, do Coyote's Mask and a Fenris chest piece. Going to, oh yeah, the Foundry Bulwark Mask. Perfect for not only Foundry Bulwark builds, but Armor Region builds. So definitely pick this one up as well. Great. Uh, what I would do is, I mean, both of those attributes are not the same. So what I would do is max out the armor first and then optimize the uh, armor region. And then for the high-end items, definitely pick up the Carbine 7. This would probably be a must-buy, actually, in my opinion. 
this is a great weapon to have and having this with max attributes and then you could change whatever talent you want perfect so pick this one up change that talent just optimize it a few times you're good to go have some fun you could try it out in conflict today and not have to worry about expertise or anything like that pretty cool thanks for the Hostile trade. broadcast all right Detected. so that is it for cassie mendoza so now it's time to go to danny weaver so Danny Weaver this week is located in Federal Triangle, and he is just across the street from the theater. The theater settlement. Here we go. <clears throat> now, if you haven't already, let me know what you're picking up today. Are there any good items? Do you think the Carbine 7 is a good one? Let's discuss. But I'm actually excited to spend some of my textiles because I am well over 260,000 textiles. I need to get rid of them. I wish we could just keep buying stuff, even if it was just like crafting caches or anything like that. I mean, you have to earn these textiles, so them limiting Detective. this yeah. is doing Go nothing but hostiles. hurt the veterans because we've been playing the game so long we have a lot of textiles. Doesn't mean you can't just give us like crafting caches or something. Like, come on. This is kind of a, kind of a cheap shot. Making us, you know, buy three things every week at like a hundred a pop. It'd take me like five years to uh, clear everything. All right, here we go. Danny Weaver. Now, I will time it, stamp it right. Meow. All right, Danny Weaver. You got something for me? So this week, Danny Weaver has one exotic cache, three optimization caches, one named item cache, and a crafting cache. Um, so this means we only get two items this week from Danny Weaver. We get one exotic and one named item. That's it. Everything else is just materials. All right. And there we go. I still have 263,000 textiles. All right, let's see what we get. Now, remember, we did check last week, and we were getting no god rolls. So here we go. Fingers crossed. What do we get? Nacosta's go bag with no max attributes and the named item. A commando with no max attributes. All right. So it is safe to say that Danny Weaver is not giving out god rolls ever again. And, well, that is your Cassie Mendoza and Danny Weaver weekly vendor reset and must buys for today, March 27th. Now, thank you for sticking around. I hope you have a great day. Take care of yourself. I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. Hit that like, subscribe. You know the whole YouTube spiel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.